Hola, buenos días, es Nico. Hola, buenos días, soy Nico. Hola, buenos días, me llamo Nico. Mucho gusto. Are you done? The white crusader is here, oh, save the white people. White crusader is here, oh, save the white people. <laughs> but yeah, let's get started. So, <laughs> uh, you're probably gonna notice off rip I sound a little off because I have my retainer in. And if you can't stomach this sound, I'm sorry. I'm usually a little more crisp. It's just I have a trip coming up and I need to be ready. But also, if you like this kind of content, make sure to follow me at patreon.com slash she goes to set it for more exclusive videos, weekly lives, and to be on the podcast. But let's get started. Essentially, we're going to be talking about the white gaze and the hold it had over a new generation of queer, black, and brown people of color. And I wanted to start off by saying this isn't going to be everybody's experience <laughs> and you know it i understand it's more of a suburban issue because when you look at people of color queer people of color of course that grew up in areas that where they were you know the racial majority they tend to have a more immediate attraction to other black and brown people of color while those who are let's say in the suburbs the transplant away from you know a large group of their own people they tend to be ostracized and make friends with people who are not necessarily in their racial, you know, group. But that's not the excuse that I want to use. I believe that it was a media brainwashing. Nico, what do you mean? You see, when we grow up and in our formative years, we use the media that we consume as a source of information, for example. Because if you did not know, a lot of YT people in the US have actually never met a black person. And they use what they've seen in the media and in movies and in music as an example as to how we all are, even though we aren't a monolith. So I wanted to say that the media itself is what brainwashed a large group of us into believing that YT men were the pedestal of social beauty. And you know, the media has always controlled beauty standards and beauty trends. So it would make sense that for our marginalized group, they would still be lifted to the top because they are still a YT man, a cisgendered man at that. So it's like, there are clear social hierarchies that they're always going to be on the top of just because of systematic racism. So for example, when I was growing up and trying my best to consume queer media because I was desperately searching for something to relate to, desperately searching for a community, I would find shows like Queer as Folk, grooming, grooming, nobody talks about that. I watched the UK and the US version, both of them bitches were a grooming session. I, al <laughs> I also watched the Eating Out movies, which were like, Caucasian, you know, I saw Noah's Ark in my early 20s. You know, I, I really did not discover that one until I already had my formative years behind me. And I also saw Moonlight when that came out ish. I kind of waited a bit because I had to avoid certain things while living under a straight Christian household. <laughs> uh, Brokeback Mountain, YT. I mean, when we look at queer media that has hit mainstream, up until we started to see the Renaissance, like Noah's Ark, The Skinny, and Moonlight, we really only had white people to look at. You remember back in the porn studio ages where they were pushing white porn stars so hard? Randy Blue, Men.com, Sean Cody. What else? I, just things that never really interested me. <laughs> Whenever they would have like a black person, on their scenes. That's when I would be like, oh, he's attractive, let me watch. But then he would be giving the same stale man stroke. And I'm just like, skin folk ain't kid folk, you know? <laughs> Cause I expected something more, but he's sleeping with a YT man. So I should not have expected anything more. But that's why I started to actively search for black bodies. And I think actively 
viewing black bodies, whether it be sexual, whether it be in the media, whether it be in music consumption, viewing black and brown people and our artistic productions, it will slowly start to deprogram the anti-blackness and the need for white acceptance. Because once I started seeing people that looked like me, black and brown people in media, once I started seeing us in music, once I started to see us in anime, you know, comic books, things that I enjoy, I finally started to feel more secure in myself. And I don't care if people judge me. <laughs> like I said, I've only ever dated one white person in my life and that was in high school for like three days. But it's the principle that it's not as easy to practice self-love as people want to say. It's not as easy to avoid the phase of chasing after white men if you are not in an area where you are the racial majority, you know? Because for example, after I moved out of the country, I came out to Houston and I was in an area, the suburbs-ish, with strictly Latinos and a lot of white people. So a lot of my friends were Latino, you know, not like Afro-Latino like me, like just indigenous or Eurocentric Latinos and white people just because that's all that was in my area. So <laughs> so it, your surroundings definitely affect the way you grow up because Though I never, f I mean, I found some white people attractive. I'm not gonna say, cause th th saying that an entire group of people are not attractive is not something I do. I find some white people attractive, but I don't, I'm not starstruck when I see an average white man, like a lot of people tend to be. But yeah, definitely drop your opinions down below. Do you believe the fixation on the white gay body that a lot of black and brown people of color tend to have, uh, especially in our formative years, comes from media brainwashing? Do you believe that it comes from the proximity from where you live? Because it's more common than you think. <laughs> like I know we get on Twitter and we like to crack jokes and we like to roast, but having only white people around you because they are still the racial majority for now. And then growing up and only seeing white gay men in media representation and the only time you see a black or brown person of color is when they are attached to a white gay man, it slowly starts to program something in your brain to say, maybe this is how it's supposed to be. Maybe this is blase, blase, blase. To be honest, I don't understand <laughs> how any of y'all can continue that cycle though, strictly because the white gay men I've seen online tend to be a little racist. Not all of them because I have white friends that I've been friends with for like eight years, you know? Um, my roommate's white. <laughs> so it's not like I have an issue with white people. It's more so from the experiences and interactions that I've seen you guys have via Grindr or via Twitter, where they'll completely lose interest with you as soon as they find out, oh, you're not a part of the fetish that I wanted. Oh, oh are you black? Oh no, you know, that, that was an entire era in dating apps where there was like, no blacks, no rice, no fats, no femmes. Like they would blatantly say this on their profiles. But now they're getting a little more covert with their racism because we will draft the shit out of you on the internet and make you lose your job. But yeah, <laughs> I say that as an example because there was a tweet that went viral about this uh, Latino and I believe Indian man that had messaged a white man on Grindr and they were flirting and the white man thought he was so beautiful because he thought he was Mediterranean. And once he found out that he was Indian, he immediately said, oh, you're not attractive anymore. I'm sorry, I don't wanna have sex with you. I just don't like Indians. So I mean, it, this happens. <laughs> it not only happens to black people, it happens to people of color, it happens to Asian people. You know, it, it incorporates all of us that are not white or Eurocentric passing. But yeah, definitely drop your opinions down below. And once again, a quick thank you to all my patrons on Patreon and a quick shout out to my third eye tier patrons. Your support means everything to me and helps me do this a lot more smoothly. I will also be listing this week's live stream topic in case anybody wants to join in on the fun. I'll see you guys there.